Welcome back to Casual Throw. We got a fresh episode of Slightly Unstable. I want to do something in this one that I haven't done in quite a while, and that is sort of lapse back into get off my lawn guy mode. I want to take you through some of my top pet peeves as a yo-yoer. So bear with me. Some of these may apply to you. Some of these may not. Don't take it personally. These are just sort of my personal uh, pet peeves that I, you know, I get on the Yo-Yo Expert Forum. I go on Instagram. I just get out there in the Yo-Yo universe. And these are the things that make me roll my eyes or whatever. You may disagree. And that is fine. These aren't necessarily intended to be hurtful, to call anybody out. Certainly some of these references, something may come to mind, a person or a company, not necessarily calling them out directly, but they just happen to be my example. Number one on my list, although I don't know why I really have them numbered because they're in no particular order, I just sort of jotted down a list as I thought of them, but one is when people post, whether it's in mail day threads or the what are you throwing at the second threads, people post a picture of a yo-yo, it's beautiful, but it's unengraved and they do not include any information about what that yo-yo is. All right, very nice, it's pretty. I've been yo-yoing for, you know, hardcore for about a year now and maybe a yo-yo's from 2014. Looks cool, but that's all I got to say about it because I have no idea in many cases what it is. Maybe it's an iconic yo-yo that I should know right away immediately what it is. Maybe it's, you know, some shortcoming on my part, but I don't know. It just kind of annoys me when people just slap a picture of an unidentifiable to me yo-yo with no explanation. Tell me what it is if you want me to drool over it. Number two is when my fellow yo-yoers get on BSTs, whatever, they do not post any prices when they're trying to sell something. Now, I wouldn't be too keen about going into a store and there's no prices on the shelves and you got to get up to the cashier and say, oh uh, yeah, you know, I'll offer you 60 cents for this can of beans. Sorry, I don't roll like that. I understand maybe some super high-end stuff, some super rare stuff. You have a yo-yo, you legitimately don't know how to value it, but I see so many posts where it's clearly, you know, a 30, a 50, a 70 dollar yo-yo, and they're just like, oh, just offer. No, just put a price on there, I'm moving on. Honestly, I don't need to be in the BST threads anyway, so maybe I should thank those folks for not putting prices on there and making me automatically just nope out. Number three, sorry some of my fellow yo-yo reviewers, it doesn't apply to everybody, but there's some that clearly don't do any homework, I swear. They just turn on the camera, start talking, pull up a phone or a laptop as they're doing it. Maybe it's just my professional background or whatnot where I appreciate when preparation is put into something before you just sort of get up, you know, so you don't just get up and wing it. Uh, I just think organization and showing that you care about it by doing your homework goes a long way, for me at least. Number four, when uninformed or underinformed people either leave bad reviews or sort of make bold statements about a yo-yo or yo-yo related product, obviously the easiest example is you hop on to Amazon and pretty much any unresponsive yo-yo, you're gonna be like, this yo-yo should be called a yo because it goes down but doesn't come back up. Well, it's because people don't know that it's unresponsive and you had to perform a minor trick to make it go back to your hand. But I mean, I think there's more commonplace examples, yo-yo expert and elsewhere, where people maybe act like experts when they're not, when a little bit of research, go back to my previous point, might have, you know, prevented you from kind of looking like a fool. Number five, and maybe this has bugged other people as well, but when I fire up a yo-yo trick tutorial and one of the first words out of the individual's mouth is, you can do this trick too, it's so easy. I automatically get frustrated because anytime you try to do something for the first time, it's not going to be easy, even though somebody has pounded it into your brain. Oh, it's so easy. Maybe a trick is simple. Maybe a trick is fundamental, but don't get up there and be like, well, look at me. I've been yo-yoing for 15 years and I can do it with my eyes closed and one hand tied behind my back and it's so easy. So you'll get it in no time. All right. Number whatever is uh, it really, really irks me when individual players, maybe sponsored players, maybe employees of companies that don't always uh, advertise that fact, uh, basically shill. I've seen this on Yo-Yo Expert, I've seen it in other places where people will only 
pimp one company or a certain line of products and you know you ask you see people you know asking for recommendations on a yo-yo or whatever and they can be counted on to pop in pimp their you know yo-yo of choice and hit the road and i've certainly seen cases where you have employees of companies post reviews of their company's latest product which i mean maybe they can be trying to be 100% honest with you but when you know money from that company is going into their pocket that just automatically should make you roll your eyes and you know question at least uh you know what is the level of sincerity there so number seven you may certainly disagree with me on this you may think that this is really good for the community or whatever but i certainly roll my eyes when i get on instagram and i see either directly through instagram or somebody did a TikTok and they uploaded to instagram or however the hell it works uh the latest cheese ball high speed corny little yo-yo video and i know you know world champs whatever prominent people are doing this and it may be you know reaching out to you know younger generation to try to get them to yo-yo great good on them hope it works but me i'm gonna roll my eyes keep scrolling because i cannot stand that sort of Another big one for me, this is number eight, a reason that I do not buy uh, yo-yos from one company in particular, but I think there's a couple that do this. Uh, and this is when yo-yo producers create false scarcity to hike up demand and by extension, the prices that they can demand for their yo-yos. Uh, I do not particularly respect this business tactic. You may think it's okay. It may be legal, I don't care. I have a major issue with that sort of approach to making money on yo-yos. I view it as borderline dishonest when there are intentionally small drops and it's just generated to build on hype and try to get the collectors to continue to throw down money. And I realize that people have their freedom and they can choose not to do this, which is I choose not to participate in this drop scramble culture that sort of results. So that's something I certainly take issue with. Companies want to run like that. Great. I'm not spending my money on their stuff. Number nine was something that sort of came up as part of a different conversation I was having on Yo-Yo Expert recently, but it got me thinking. And there was sort of this undertone of superiority, if you will, involving the handcrafted production of fixed axle or other, you know, handmade yo-yos versus individuals and companies that, you know, have come up with the CADs, the designs, and then send them off either in the elsewhere in the country or off to China in many cases to have those yo-yos produced. And there's just sort of this assumption that what you know the, the machining side and that approach is lesser than the handmade approach and i guess i can see where this sort of handcrafted superiority ideology comes from but at the end of the day i view it as just different approaches to making ideally great things that people will enjoy so i don't see a need for individuals to uh sort of hold their craft above that of others and the last one uh, I think a lot of people are going to fall into this. It's this growing trend that I've seen certainly on some, uh, at least Facebook groups, is the yo-yo knife guy sort of fad that's going on where people aren't, you know, obviously the hobby that I'm involved in here and these pages are dedicated to is yo-yoing, but people have really felt a need to uh, situate their yo-yos within the broader e EDC culture and then also not just do these big pocket dumps of all this crap that I don't want to carry around in my pockets. I'm a minimalist guy so I'm kind of I guess I'm going to be kind of screwed when the apocalypse strikes and I'm not going to have an arsenal in my pocket but just these ridiculous pictures that I've been seeing of increasingly ridiculous knives that people supposedly carry around whatever I guess to each their own but again these are my personal pet peeves and as get off my lawn guy i have a lot of them so if you bear with me this long i appreciate you stopping by sticking around I'll see you around